In this video lecture, we're going to talk about the concept of links in Linux. We'll take a look at hard links and soft links and talk a little bit about how they're implemented under the hood. So first of all, let's start thinking about how your hard drive is organized and talk about a concept called inodes. Uh, basically, on a Unix system, if we think of the hard drive that our operating system is stalled upon, you can kind of think of there, well, you can think of there being three uh, distinct areas on that hard drive. One of those areas is called the super block. Superblock contains information about the type of the file system, uh, its size, and some other information about uh, the status of the file system. We're not going to talk about Superblocks too much today, but they're really important. Uh, they're actually stored redundantly on the disk in case there's ever a problem with one of them. Uh, there's backups because it's that critical to how the disk um, operates within the context of the operating system. Next up is this concept of the inode table, and this is the concept that's most relevant to our discussion today. Uh, in Linux, inodes uh, contain, as the slide says here, uh, information about uh, the files on your system. Specifically, it talks about their mode, so when we do like a chmod, uh, you can see information about um, that stuff comes from uh, the inode table. Other information like who owns it, what size it is, creation of modification dates. Uh, and then more importantly, uh, at the bottom, in addition to keeping all of this, this metadata related to the file itself, it keeps information about where one can find the actual data on disk. Uh, and it's kind of important to note that an inode table uh, is actually a reference to where real data is actually stored out in the data blocks. So when you store data, it's actually being stored out in the data blocks. Uh, just kind of wherever there's available space. But what ties that data that's stored out in the data blocks back to the to the operating system is this. Every file has a reference in the inode table that points to data out in the data blocks. Um, if you've ever seen uh, data recovery software where at some point you have deleted, say, a picture, and then uh, you actually ran a recovery program to get that picture back, um, the way it works in most cases is that when you actually delete something from a hard drive, it doesn't get deleted from the data block area. The data just gets unlinked from the inode table. So you lose the, you delete the reference in the inode table, uh, but the old data just stays out in the data blocks until it's overwritten by newer data. So that's why in some cases data can be recovered uh, even after you've deleted it, as long as you haven't done a lot of um, writing data to the disk after that point. Anyway, the key here today is we're going to talk about inodes, and the inode uh, value is going to be useful to us in discussing what links are. So let's think back to when we were using ls-l output and talking about each component. And specifically, I want to look at the area of ls-l output called, um, the, or which is the links area. And so this basically gives the total number of links uh, to a given file. And this number is going to be important to us as we discuss this concept. So um, keep this column or well this this yeah the specific column of information in mind as we we start talking about this bit of information so before we look at this on the command line what are links what are hard versus soft links well to simplify this soft links are basically just like shortcuts in microsoft windows uh, you may have shortcuts on your desktop to programs in another folder and a shortcut is really just a little file that tells you where to find another file so this idea of shortcuts probably shouldn't be new to you. Uh, we'll actually look at this uh, and take a peek at how it works uh, within Unix. Uh, the, the concept that's usually new to people is this idea of hard links. And the simplest way to think of hard links is that they're just a different name uh, for the same file. So as we're in a shortcut situation, you have this new file that points to a file. When you have a hard link, you're really just creating a new file uh, name that links to the original file. And so uh, we'll take a look at what this means on the command line and we'll talk about how this works in terms of um, creating these. Uh, and so let's go uh, look at the command to create one of these and then talk about them. I'll start with shortcut uh, soft links first because they're the easiest. All right, so um, actually before we go to the command line, let's take a look at what a soft link is. Soft links, when I create a soft link to a file, when I create a shortcut to a file, I'm gonna create a new file and that file is going to point to an original file. Okay, and what you'll notice is that each one of these shortcut links will be given its own inode value. So we'll know that these are actually different files, and we'll look at how to view a file's inode number in a second. But basically, if the inode value is different, then you know your file is different. Um, if the inode value for a file is the same, then you know that that file is the same. And we'll see this again in a second on the command line. So the way we create soft links is we use the ln command with the dash s option. Uh, and then what we'll do is we will um, put our 
uh, file that we want to make a link to, and then finally the name of the shortcut we want to make that link to. So let's go look at this on the command line, and then we can come back to this uh, slide if necessary to discuss. So in my current directory, I have a file called test that I've used in some previous uh, demonstrations. So let's go ahead and use that. So if I want to make a shortcut to this, well, first of all, let's take a look at some information uh, about the file test. Uh, and specifically, I'm going to use ls but I'm going to put the i option in here, which will show me the i node for that file. And so the first value that we see is 134,671. This value is that file's inode. It's like its address on disk. Uh, this is the unique identifier in the inode table uh, that contains all of this information about the file as well as the pointer out to the actual data in your hard drive's data block. So what's interesting here is that you'll notice that this file has a single link and we're talking about links today. So great. So this file has one name. Um, so let's create a soft link to it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create using the ln command with the dash s option uh, a new link and I'm going to point that link to the test file and I'm going to call it my shortcut shortcut okay now if I do an ls you'll notice that there is a new file in this directory notice that that new file is also a kind of like a teal blue and that it um, appears a little bit differently so let's take a look at just using ls-li the test file and the my shortcut file so we can see how they differ. So the first thing you'll notice that's a little bit different here is that if we look all the way to the right you'll see my shortcut and then something that looks like an arrow and then the name test and what this indicates is that this is actually a shortcut file or a soft link that points back to the file test. If we go back all the way to the left you'll notice that the soft link I just created has a new inode number 133966 and it's different than the file test. So what you can tell from the inode values as well is that these are two different files. My shortcut is a special file and test is its own standalone file. Both of these are standalone files. The only difference is that test contains data and my shortcut just points to that original file. And another way to know that this is a shortcut is if you look, the first letter uh, in front of the permissions for the file is an L which stands for link. And on the original file notice uh, that it stands for uh, just it's a, just a dash for a regular file. So if I look at what's in the test file, you'll notice that uh, it has some words. Uh, was thinking about using this for possibly a grep exercise. And what you'll notice is if I just cat test, I get the contents of that file. What happens if I cat my shortcut? I get the exact same answer. Why? Well, my shortcut is a sh uh, is a link that points to the original file test. So let's clear this real quick and let's bring back that ls-li of both of these files. Now what happens if I delete the test file because shortcut points to test. Well if I delete the test file that means shortcuts now no longer pointing to a file. So um, you know better yet instead of deleting it I'll just move it to a new name And now if I do an ls-l, you'll notice I get an error uh, because, oops, and I would have been helped if I worked on that. And you'll notice now this turns out to be red. And there's a problem there because this now says it was looking to point to a file called test. And if I try to cat my shortcut, I get an error that says no such file or directory. Because my shortcut was pointing to a file named test, I renamed it, or if I deleted it, I'd get the same answer. But if I look at renamed test, the file's still there, all the data is still there. So again, this is just a simple way to create shortcuts. Let's take a look at this and see what the GUI makes this look like. I'm currently in my home directory. I am going to uh, go into my desktop directory, which these are the uh, directories that I utilize for um, you know putting stuff on the Ubuntu desktop and you'll notice that I already have a link in here to terminal so if I do an ls-li on terminal all right what you'll notice is that uh, this is a link because it starts with L it's also a uh, teal blue uh, you'll notice that it has the inode of 137153 and you'll notice that this link actually points to a file called slash user slash bin slash uh, gnome terminal 
And why do I have this shortcut here? Well, here's why. I'm going to minimize the console and I'm going to take a look at my Ubuntu desktop, uh, which is hiding some things here because uh, you'll notice that on my desktop I actually have a shortcut. Now this looks like Windows, right? You see the little arrow that points up to the file and you see uh, that it says terminal and actually if I were to right click on this uh, well, let's see if this works. Properties will even show me that this points to this file, that it's a link. So this is probably the view most of you are used to seeing shortcuts uh, in because this is very similar to how uh, Windows deals with links. So that's the concept behind shortcuts uh, or soft links. And the proper term here is soft links. You know, it's important that you know on tests uh, and whatnot that we're dealing with this idea uh, of soft links. So um, next up, we'll take a look at hard links. Hard links are a little bit more difficult to understand because they're different from the shortcut links or the soft links that we're used to dealing with in Windows. But to simplify it, once you get started, the easiest way to think of a hard link is just another name for a file. So this idea when we create a hard link to a file, we're really just creating another name that points to that file. And we could actually put that hard link in any directory. Uh, so what's really nice is you could have a single file exist on the system, and then you could just have a bunch of names that point to that single file. And what you'll notice is that all of the names, when we do an ls uh, dash li on them will have the same inode because they all point to the same file. Uh, and the command we're going to use for this is ln without the dash s option. So just straight ln. And this is called hard linking. So this slide demonstrates this concept by showing you that there's three different names uh, that point to the same file. And we'll actually be able to see how many links point to a given file uh, by looking at the link column in the ls dash l output. So let's take a look at the uh, shortcut that was on my desktop that pointed to the terminal. And so what you'll notice here uh, is that um, this, is, this is a shortcut link, right? So this again it has this idea that there is um, some type of uh, you know, separate file pointing to the GNOME terminal file uh, executable on my system. And if I were to do an ls uh, dash li on uh, the GNOME terminal, you'll notice that it has a separate inode, right? It's actually owned by root. I'm allowed to run it. Um, and this idea that these are separate files, because again, these have separate inodes. So just enforcing the idea of soft links before we get into hard links. So let's start to create some hard links to, let's say this lab three test file. So what do I got on that lab three test file already? Well, here's its inode, and you'll notice in this column it has one link. That means this file only has one name. So I'm going to make a new file uh, name that points to it. I'm going to make a new hard link to this file. So I'm going to use ln, uh, and I'm going to do lab3test, txt, and I'm going to be like, I'm going to call it hard link one. Now if I look at ls-li on the original file, you'll notice that the number has gone from one to two, because now there is a second link that points to that file. In fact, it's because I created this file called hardlink. So let's look at both of those files at the same time. So what you'll notice is now both of these files have the exact same inode because they are the same file. And what you'll notice is that um, both of these have two links. And actually when you remove a file, like when I delete a file, let, let me remove the original lab3 file. And we'll go up and we will just do an li of hard link one. What you'll notice is now I've deleted the lab3 test.txt file. And now the hard link file remains and it has one link. The only way to delete a file in a Linux system is to make sure it has zero links. Uh, there's actually a find command that you can use that will uh, search your system and make sure that there are um, no files with a given um, uh, inode. Uh, so the idea being that if you see that a file has two links and you're like, well, where's that second link coming from? You can actually use the find name to find files by inode, which would then tell you where that other linked file. And actually, if you do something like, um, if I look at the directory that I'm in, okay, what directory am I currently in? Well, I'm currently in my desktop directory. And I did an LD 
and D is a way to just get directory information without getting information about what's in the directory, remember. You'll notice that this directory that I'm in has um, three links to it. Uh, and so you wonder, well, okay, why does this directory have three links to it? Well, um, there's a couple reasons. Uh, the directory has a name, and the directory also has a couple of other items to it. Uh, if we look at, oops, sorry, let's clear this and do ls dash la on the current directory. Notice that dot is a directory uh, for the current, is a link to the current directory. Um, notice that this directory has a name that's a second link. And then finally notice there's a directory called top inside of this directory. If I do an ls dash la on top, You'll notice that top has a dot dot directory. Well, let me throw an inode number count in here. Let's look at this a little bit better. Uh, so let's do ls dash la i on this directory. So you'll notice that the current directory's inode is 136987. Okay, so this directory has three links because it's known as uh, its existing name, um, therefore dot. And if I do an ls dash la on top, You'll notice that dot dot in this directory also points to 136987 because that is the name of the directory. And then the file also has its own um, name itself, which is uh, the third link. So if I were to create, like delete um, top and then do an ls, lai of this directory, Notice that the directory now goes down to two links. Well, what are the two links? Well, the two things that this directory has linked to it is currently uh, its name and the link dot. So every directory always has at least two links to it because that directory is known as dot and that directory is also known by its given name. One final note about hard links. Uh, while you can make soft links, Two directories. I just wanted to emphasize the fact that you cannot make hard links on most modern operating systems uh, to directories because it can cause some weird issues with recursion. So I think I, I wanted to make a second, take a second to just stress that. So if I try to take this directory testing that I've created and create a hard link to it, uh, right, and I'll say my hard linked directory. Uh, I get an error that says hard links not allowed for directory. Uh, so just be aware that um, while the system uses some hard links for the dot um, and dot dot directories um, that you as a user uh, are most likely unable to create hard links to directories, but you can create them to files.